Hey guys, it's Christy with Scent and Lotus Tarot, and I just wanted to come to you with this video tonight. I've sort of been challenged and um, taken on accountability. It's a great part of healing. Um, I'm probably going to say um about 585 times. I can just feel it, but um, here I go. <sighs> Let me take a minute because let's talk accountability and vulnerability, okay? Two of the probably the most important things that we could ever do, right, is to be accountable for things that we've done, things that we're um, lacking, things that we're not good at, things that we struggle with, things that we're um, working through or working on in order to get through that healing process smoothly. Um, and then with that little task of being accountable for all those things comes vulnerability, right? It's a time that, I mean, we're vulnerable within ourselves, of course, through the whole process. But when we actually begin to speak on our own struggles and our own story and our own shortcomings, great word, um, our own inabilities, our own self-awareness of what it is within us that still needs fixed. And I don't know what's going on with my nose, so I know I sound funny, but um, I don't know. I think I got like a sinus infection. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> All I'm doing is stalling. That's what this is, just so you know, and there's vulnerability right there. I like to think that at all times, or at most times, I like to be open and vulnerable and real and raw and authentically who I am, no matter who I'm around, you know? But, um, and I think for the most part, I am. I, I don't, I don't feel that I'm not, but there are parts of me and pieces of me and crevices that I hide, you know, we all do. I think that's pretty normal. Um, but I heard a great podcast today and uh, it really opened up my eyes that uh, even those things that we think that we're doing a wonderful job of hiding, you know, everybody else around us knows it, you know, or sees it or sees through it. You know, that's, that's the thing. So this video in particular is specifically addressing the idea that it's okay, you know, to be vulnerable and it's okay to say the things that we're not great at and it's okay to say the things that we could do better and it's okay to th say the things that um, we're afraid of or that we're not good at or needs work, right? We're always a work in progress and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the fact that you're even working or that I'm even working or anybody's working on becoming a better version of themselves is friggin' amazing, if you ask me. So part of that process that can help you along, and I'm doing it just simply because I want to be maybe a catalyst to your own doing of this, is just taking a look at some of those things that you don't like to talk about, that you don't like to say, that you don't like to admit, or you don't want to admit because you'd rather just, you know, pretend it's not the truth, but it could be this, those little beautiful little things that you discover about yourself that are exactly what are uh, in your way of doing or being or becoming exactly who it is that you want to become, do, be, or whatever or ascend to, or to become a better version of. So, uh, I don't know, where are we going to get started? <laughs> There's a whole shit ton of stuff that I suck at, that I'm not good at, that uh, I don't like about myself, that I hide, that I um, mask, mask. And see, you know, the funny thing about that is, <laughs> is that literally I was like, um, I'm going to do this video right here in my bed, like, because that's where I'm at, because my nose is all stuffy, and I don't really feel good, and I feel a little sick, and I just want to cuddle up. But what did I do? I went into the 
you know, restroom and got all like, I like put on makeup like that was going to help <laughs> mask uh, the idea of having to say the things that I'm going to say in this video. And I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to let it flow, you know? That's kind of how things work with me. I don't, I don't, if I prepare, it's a, it's, it's a mess. I'm better when I just do, you know, and when I just pick up this phone and I talk into it and then, um, then I'm good. But if I try to prepare some sort of a grand speech or a grand, um, video, I get all in my head about it and I fumble it up and fuck it up excuse my language but that's the truth and um yeah so I I just I don't know what's gonna come out but I'm gonna go through it and see what comes out as I speak about it but I got my lipstick on because that's gonna help you know and this is what we do as humans don't we it's like if it's not one thing it's another you know like if we can't talk about it then we'll just um pretend it away or um hope you know that nobody notices it about us. But the truth of the matter is, is that it's exactly what everybody probably notices, you know? Is that um, there's things that are hidden or things that are unknown or things that are that you're insecure about, you know? And maybe the lipstick is just one of those reasons that I put it on is because I'm a little insecure without it, you know? Or, um, I don't know, you know? But, um, Okay, things I really suck at. <laughs> Anything numbers, you know, for sure. Like, I definitely have trouble reading numbers. Like, and it's really difficult for me to work with because with letters or with reading or um, comprehension of reading, I I do really well. And so with numbers, it's like looking at something uh, like a foreign language. You know, it's like, they're there, I understand what they are, I know what order they're supposed to go in, but as soon as I look down at them in my brain, they get all mixed up. And so, I was never good at math, I was never, I never tried at math, put it that way, because I got overwhelmed by not being able to do numbers, you know? I would um, transpose, I would flip things around. I would do it completely the wrong way. Like, I don't know. I just didn't do well. And so, so yeah, I suck at numbers. And that is uh, pretty much numbers, uh, like whatever numbers involve. So <laughs> if it has something to do, um, and I can't say that I suck at all numbers. I mean, I'm a nurse, but it's like, with that, there were formulas that I had to learn, and and as soon as I knew the formula, I knew how to plug everything in, and, and it made sense to me in that way. And I did have a really great teacher um, in school for nursing who, who was able to teach me in a way that I could understand nursing math, but... Um, but yeah, anything number related really confuses me. And so, um, so I usually give up and I'm a big giver upper on stuff that I'm not good at because I tend to be pretty decent at a lot of things I've tried. And so when I get to something that I'm not good at, then I'm just like, well, it's just not fun, you know? And so I don't want to do it. And so I'm not gonna, and that's not challenging myself and that's wrong on my part. You know, that's an insecurity of saying, like, if I can't be the best at it, then I don't want to be it at all. And um, that's self-defeating. That's shit talk on yourself, you know. And I'm a good shit talker on myself. <laughs> Insecurities, you know. Um, lack of confidence. Lack of, um, lack of, uh. I don't know. This is very vulnerable. I feel very naked. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, what else? What else can we talk about? Um, I sucked at being a parent a lot. Like, 
I was 19 when I had my kids, and so um, that's not an excuse, but it, it does make a difference. And um, I grew up with my kids, you know? So think about, like, I don't know, like, just things I would have done differently if I would have been, like, had a normal brain, you know, a fully developed brain. <laughs> By the time I had my kids, I think I'd have done a little bit better. Um, but I, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't trade it, you know? It's like I wouldn't trade every single lesson I learned during that time. I wouldn't trade any um, anything that has unfolded in my life, really. And that's one good thing that I can say about myself is that, like, I'm super aware of how good my life has been and and even even in dark moments I, um I was able to see the good that came out of it and what I learned from it and to be able to shift it in my mind in a way that I could uh accept it you know even if it was something that wasn't good it was like I could see how it benefited me in some way why it had to happen, why it was the way it was, why everything happens for a reason, you know? And I know that's not easy to uh, accept, but it is a good, uh, a good way to take the time to look at your life in that manner is to say, like, instead of being angry about something, I can take it and uh, get every piece of it out of it that benefited me. And that can help me to move on from whatever it was, you know? And that's, I mean, we all struggle, you know? And it's an ongoing process and it's something you always have to reevaluate within yourself or check yourself on. Especially when you find yourself in that place of complaining, because I can find myself in like that at times. And I'm like, why am I complaining, <laughs> you know? I know like the first time that I really got how insignificant shit was, was like, um, like the night before I donated my kidney to my dad, it was like, um, I thought to myself and I prayed and I said, if everything goes good, you know, like my dad was sick and dying, you know? And I didn't get lower in my life than I was at that time, to be very honest. I was very sad. I was very um, broken about it, about the idea of losing my dad way earlier than I should. And so um, taking a minute to like stand back and be like, if this goes good, like, holy shit, like what, what could there be to complain about, you know, like things even became silly that I ever did complain about, you know? And it was like, I felt empowered because it was like, I'm taking control of a situation that uh, could have gone bad. And I'm giving it the ability to be different by saying, no, uh -uh. it ain't going to be that way. It's going to be like this. And I'm going to shift it and, and, um, make it so that it's good and once it's once we're safe <laughs> you know after the surgery it's like then I have no reason to ever think in my brain ever again that I need to be not okay you know like I have the ability to control how I'm gonna feel about anything and when it comes to a sick parent or a sick loved one, you know, somebody close to you, it's like, there's not much that can be worse than that. And so, um, so I knew that if I could transmute that, that I wouldn't have to, um, ever have to worry about not being able to see the bright side of anything, you know? And, and, and it changed me in a way that was like, like, 
I'm going to make sure that I don't ever feel really, really bad about anything because what do I need to do to change my mind about it? What do I need to do to change the outcome of it? What can I do to look at it from a different angle or to just accept it, you know, and move forward and, and then look at what I did learn in the situation. So ever since that day, you know, after that surgery and I was safe and my dad was safe, it was like, uh, something within me was like, look what I just did, you know, now, like, what can't I do? You know, what have I in the past ever talked myself out of that I was like, I'm incapable or I don't know how or I don't know if I should try or I'm too nervous or I'm too shy or I'm too introverted or whatever it is. Now I'm like, I'll do it. You know what I mean? I'll at least try. I might F it up terribly, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to live the rest of my life on purpose. And, and that was a. A big turning point for me in my life, for sure. Um, to know that I had some... I was in charge of me, you know? That I was in charge of how I saw things. I was in charge of how I reacted. I was in charge of how I... Um, how my life would unfold, you know? Or at least my perception of my own life, you know? And that I'm in charge of what I do or don't do. So... I suck at I'm a big procrastinator I hate that I wish I wasn't you know but I always done much better in chaos like so like some of the things that I do like projects or something like that or and I have a deadline it's like wow you know like I'm like at it within the last like um I don't know whatever you want to call that like the last half hour of it you know what I'm saying like I'm usually the one like a night before a test I'd be up studying or you know what I mean like I'm that person last minute Lucy I don't know call me whatever but I am I'm a procrastinator I'm a daydreamer and that distracts me a lot of the time. My mind is always going. It doesn't stop. Like, ever. I wish it did. But it don't. And so, I can tend to get easily, easily distracted. Like, if you ever ask anybody who knows me that, like, has ever shared space with me. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, if I'm cooking, I leave a drawer open or a... A cupboard open and you know like it's just like my mind is always just going and and then like I turn around and I almost like smack my head and in, into a, like a cupboard that's open because I never shut it and it's like that gets annoying for some people that are around me <laughs> because I'm I'm like always I'm like a little bit I don't know I'm like I'm a little bit of a dipshit like I forget things like that and um because I'm distracted so with that comes a lot of anxiety, you know, because if I don't, if I'm not busy in some way, if I'm not doing something with my mind, it's not good, you know, like, cause then it, then it harbors, then I harbor anxiety. And so, um, my best environment is one where I'm always learning, always doing, and always moving, and that it should be always changing. <laughs> because if I get um, in a routine, like something that's so routine that I do the same thing over and over again, it's, it's the same thing. My mind will get boggled with distractions and I'm, then I'm not good, you know? Like, I'm not happy, I should say. I'm not content. So I like to be moving, I like to be doing, I like to be distracted constructively, especially with things that I'm interested in, you know? What, what else am I shitty at? This is pretty freeing, you know? 
I was a little afraid of it, but this is actually kind of freeing. How many minutes are we? Oh my god, 20 minutes I've been jabbering on. Um, I don't know. Write down in the comments some of the things that you want to know about me, and I'll be glad to tell you. Um, I'm afraid a lot of times to even, like, uh, put myself out there. Like, I'm an introvert, so it's hard for an introvert to, um, to always feel secure enough within themselves because they've always kind of been the person that hides to interact a lot, you know? And part of that is because I'm empathic. I'm just, I know I'm making excuses. Listen, <laughs> I'm really bad at making excuses for myself. Um, but like when I'm empathic, then I take on a lot of people's energy and, and I absorb it. And when I should just be observing. And um, so if somebody, and I'm not good, I will say this. I'm not good in um, text form. I mean, I'm funny. At least I think I'm funny. But again, like, you know, like, if I, if I'm texting with somebody who doesn't interpret my text style, they don't, they don't get my humor. Or like, they think I'm being mean, and I'm not like I'm razzing. Like, that's just like my personality. I'm like a, I'm a kidder. I'm a, like, poker, I'm a, I like to have fun. And so, um, so sometimes if somebody doesn't know me well, then they may take it as, like, it was a mean statement, or it sounded mean, or it read mean. And I'm working on that. I've really been trying to be more careful with my words, you know, because I realized that a lot of times in my life, I've wrote some things that were probably seemed harsh, but like I'm also somebody who just says what's on, no, I, I shouldn't say that, I, I don't do that, I don't say what's on my mind all the time, but like I'm one of those people that when it's time for me to say something and I want to say it, then I tend to be uh, straightforward about it, and so sometimes it, it might read or seem mean, and I don't want that. Like, I'm, I think I'm, like, one of the nicest people. I don't know. I think I'm a nice person. I think that I like to uh, think that people think I'm a nice person. But, so I'm trying really hard to get better at communication in writing. I can write a good paragraph, but I can't, if I'm talking to somebody in paragraph, Unless you know me, sometimes people take me wrong or read me wrong or maybe I'm just a shitty writer, you know, in text. And I'm willing to accept that and work on it and change it. Um, I could go on all night. <laughs> this is kind of cozy. I like laying in the bed doing a video. Um... What else? Did you just hear my stomach? Oh my god. I like made the growliest noise ever, but um I can't think right off the okay, one thing I really regret. Let me tell you this. I probably only ever told this to one person ever in my whole life. Because that's how uh ashamed of it I am <clears throat> um, so when I was like I don't know seven six somewhere around there um, I never knew you know that like we were poor you know growing up I didn't know that all I knew was like I had loved my life you know what I mean like I lived in a neighborhood full of amazing kids. We played outside from dusk till dawn, <laughs> you know, like, well, actually beyond dawn, or I'm sorry, beyond dusk. Did I say that right? I don't even know. From morning to night is the, is the thing. 
and and you know like we'd play hide and seek at night like I had the best childhood ever as far as like that was concerned you know and um so I didn't know we were poor like I what is your what's your reference I mean I lived on a street with kids just like me you know what I mean and I loved my life as a kid there you know in that neighborhood and everything but um it became like I don't know like when I went to school and stuff and I still didn't notice like my parents always made sure we had everything we needed you know and um my mom like she you know we weren't the kids that like and I don't even know if I knew any kids at that time that got whatever in the hell they wanted that was not the case it was like birthdays Christmas you know like you know that's what when we got a gift or something you know gifts but um there was one particular birthday of mine that I wanted a Barbie, you know, because like all my um, friends were getting Barbies at that time, you know, and um, my mom had made me like sewed me this like this bunny and um, and like I'll probably cry telling the story just because I still I'm so mad at myself or like ashamed, you know, like think that I was like such a shitty kid you know but um like she sewed it for me and she made it for me and like when I opened it I was like this shitty brat like where's my Barbie you know like what's like I don't I wanted a Barbie <laughs> you know and it's like um that haunts me to this day like that I didn't appreciate that and like I, I, I'm sure I've told my mom that story, you know what I mean? But it's like, it still haunts me about myself that that I didn't appreciate it, you know? Like, it was the only thing that she could give. But it was like, I remember that following like payday she went and bought me a Barbie you know when she wrapped it and gave it to me and it's like I couldn't even even like my eight year old or seven or six or five or I don't know how old I was but like like that's when it hit me when she like waited to pay day to get it, you know? And here was my bratty ass. Like But like what a shitty person, you know? And like that's when I knew like how much my parents I mean, I knew always, but it's like, that was a wake-up call for me to be like, get your shit together, you know? Like, like, who the hell do you think you are, you know? And it still haunts me, and I'm 43, you know? Things you could have done differently, things you should have done differently, things you should have perceived differently. And I mean, I was a kid, but it doesn't matter, it's still a wound, you know? And I think about that money now and like what I wouldn't give in my whole entire life to know where that money is or to have it and to cherish it for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? And I mean, we moved. I was like 14 or something and I don't know if it got lost in the move somewhere or um, if it's in, could possibly even be in their attic or something. But it's like, I would love to find that money that my mom made me and just keep it forever to remind me always of like the shit that's important in life you know like that everybody struggles that everybody has hard times that it's okay um 
that's not what's important. The important part is that my mom sat up and sewed that thing for me and made it for me and wanted to give me something and and I was a brat about it, you know. Ugh. That's one of the biggest things that I hate about myself. Um. Ooh, let's not talk about what I hate about myself. I don't go there very often. Um. My hope in this video is to like get you thinking about some of those things you know about yourself that you just um that if you can't even admit them to yourself you can't fix them you know and, and it's like we don't have to admit them to anybody else but sometimes just like even just confiding in anybody or a friend or somebody that you feel safe with just to say the things about yourself that are you just that you know need work you know like like um it's freeing it feels good to think about those things because because somewhere they're inside you, you know, and you don't know if those are those things that are holding you back from ever doing the things that you actually want to be doing, you know. I got bullied a lot, you know, a lot in my life. <laughs> Thankfully, I've worked through all that. You know what I mean? Like, I really have. It took a long damn time. And sometimes still, still. You know, like, I'll hear something in my uh, head about something that may have made, been said about me or whatever. But, you know, now I let that kind of stuff fuel me, you know? Like, like if, I, if there's somebody that makes fun of me now, it's just like, cool. You know, like, <laughs> I, I have no need to impress people anymore. I have no need to, like, feel your validation of me anymore. It doesn't matter to me what you think of me. And that, that was just the most freeing experience in my life, is to not care what other people think. And, um, but for sure, you know, that stuff can still affect us in ways, like, you know, it can, um, keep us stuck in certain areas like well I don't want to look and say say people called you weird um which now I take as a compliment <laughs> to be very honest because if you think I'm weird and that I'm different from everybody else then I'm on the right track you know what I mean but like if in the past or um if that's still a place for you like somebody calling you a certain name or thinking a certain way of you or whatever if that's still something that um, haunts you or bothers you. It's like, what did it also teach you, like, about people, you know? Is that, um, imagine, like, I was never a bully ever. Like, I never. I used to, like, <laughs> I would like punch bullies. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally got in a fight with a boy when I was like, God, I had to have been like five or six. I don't know. I used to fight with people who bullied people. You know what I mean? And, um, so I was never the bully, but, um, and I hated bullies, but now I, I feel so bad for them because I think, how unhappy or sad or hurt or shitty must they feel about themselves that they actually have it within them to hurt other people for no good reason, you know? No good reason whatsoever. No, um, no rhyme or reason to it. Just to be mean. Just to pick. Just to be spiteful. Just to, I don't know, hurt someone. I, I feel bad. Because I think, what happened in your life? Or what are you lacking? Or what 
who raised you, you know? Like, um, how come you didn't get your mouth washed out with soap? <laughs> you know, like, as far as, like, I don't know, like, who who taught you how to be that mean? And I feel bad about that, you know? Like, um, I think... I don't know. I don't know what causes that. But I feel like if we could be more willing to understand if, if say, we are the bully in the situation, if we can understand what it is that makes us do that in the first place, then that's where we can get started with understanding ourselves a little better on how we can change it, you know, or how we can fix uh, our own hurt. So that we don't end up hurting other people, you know, just because we're hurt in some way. Um, I don't know. This was way longer than I had planned. <laughs> so much longer than I planned. And it's a little crazy and I don't know, like, but I'm going to upload it because this is what healing is like. It's sitting in a room by yourself. It's, uh feeling you know not numbing or masking or hiding or um shaming or feeling guilt about who you are as a person light dark um it's filling every piece of you and uh and working your way through it why did i feel that way why did i do that why did i say those things why did i um how can i get better at what have I learned from, you know, how can I take this terrible experience in my life and shift it in a way that could possibly help others, you know, or what did I learn from it that I, I thank God for the lessons in that experience, you know what I mean? And, and, um, you're on your own timeline, you know, nobody can force it. Nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Nobody can tell you, um, any of it but I can tell you that just this little talk tonight with Yins whoever's watching I don't know I only got probably like two or three views I'm sure because I don't know what's going on with my YouTube but um I can't seem to get anybody to view but uh any hoot I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that because I'm not good at technology there's another good thing I'm not good at <laughs> I don't know how to work anything, you know, like, I don't know how to work half the apps that are on my phone right now, you know, and I, uh, and I get overwhelmed, and so, I don't know, so I gotta work on it, still not good at editing videos, still gotta work on it, you know, and it's okay if we can accept stuff about ourselves too, not excuse it, not stop working on it, but uh, accept that where we are is right here and now, and this is what needs done moving forward, and this is how I could get better, this is how I could tweak it, this is how I could shift. And um, But awareness is the first step. So I hope this video has helped you in some way to get comfortable with you, you know, or just sitting in a room and, I don't know, talking to your phone like I'm doing right now. And, um, even if you don't post it anywhere, uh, you know, sometimes just getting out some of those things that we're feeling is like therapy, you know, without having to pay a big bill about it. So I hope that this has helped you in some way and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye for now.